here is another top 10 roller coaster ranking video that literally no one asked for nor do i think anyone cares about because who wants to see another top 10 roller coaster video however uh here's mine <laughs> Also, as a side note, I am an artist and I do a lot of posters. Uh, I call them really coasty posties. Um, I do commissions, so if you commission me, I won't put it on my red bubble because that's a commission. Uh, so I do private commissions, um, but I also have a red bubble store, which I will link below if you're interested. Um, please contribute to my Squishmallow fund. All right, so for number 10, no one on earth is gonna agree with me and that is totally fine. Um, and I'm pretty sure anyone who actually knows me who's watching this can, I think you can automatically tell what it is based on how excited I am right now. Um, it's Weep the Dips. Now, I mean, like, I love it so much to the point that when I wrote it, I sobbed, like, uncontrollably. Like, I bawled my eyes out just standing there about to ride it. I was, like, shaking. And then someone who works there, Mike, literally was like, Yo, you want to go like underneath the ride? And I was like, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Like, I don't know if he saw me crying, if he felt bad. It was like very embarrassing, but I'll attach videos so you can see me literally sobbing my eyes out. Like this thing is only 40 feet tall. It only goes to, like 10 miles an hour, but like you could possibly valley. Like, and also like, why does it have way more airtime than any intimate out there? riddle me that one hmm like i have never been so genuinely afraid on a ride like this thing has no seatbelts, and those dips do be dipping like it is genuinely scary i i don't even care every giga every hyper every rmc is literally shaking in its boots right now from leap the dips i am leap the dips number one fan i am pretty sure that went on for way too long. However, I do want to add that it did do a poster for Leap the Dips and the park actually sells it. Lake Mont, I love you and thank you for asking me to do this. Um, I don't know how to attach a video, like a photo. It's here, here's the poster I did, I think, or I'll put it somewhere. Um, so if you want it, please go to the park, please support Lake Mont. They do so much for like Leap the Dips. They do, I didn't get a red Skyliner there, but they, they're the best, okay? Go there. If you want to make a big titty goth bitch happy, go ride Leap the Dips. All right, so number nine is actually a ride that I just rode last weekend for the first time. It is Wonder Woman at Fiesta, Texas. And I don't think we talk about this ride enough. I said it. As a collective community, I think you guys are pretty mean to this ride. Like based off what everyone else said, I kind of went, I don't know what I was expecting, but it sure the fuck wasn't that, let me tell you. Uh, the first single rail prototype really uh did the damn thing for me personally um it's like 113 feet and only goes 52 miles per hour but just looking at that thing it looks like it's like going 80 miles an hour the way it whips through those transitions and everything it is ridiculous and then getting actually on it in the back row it it completely disorienting i loved it i wanted to ride over and over again i want to rewrite it so bad right now just thinking about it i just you guys are mean great ride love it also as a side note how did they um outdo pantheon's pantheon all right so number eight is a mac coaster weird right not really it's uh time traveler silver dollar city so it makes sense. It's like the most unique ride experience I've ever experienced personally till this day. I thought about that ride for way too long after I rode it for the first time. Like I actually had my 200th credit there. It was Outlaw Run, which Outlaw Run is a phenomenal ride. Super intense, don't get me wrong. And I do love intensity, obviously. But like, it's so unique. Like the spinning trains, like the car, whatever. I just, the first drop, like, out of the station right away in those spinny cars like excuse me it's not even tall it's like only 100 feet tall it only goes like 50 miles an hour it just it's so fun it's so unique and like the theming if six flags could just take a note on like a crumb of that theming then it also tiktoks no one told me a tiktok's right in the front bonus points for tiktoking
All right, so number seven is also a non-intimate. It is a Fury at Carowinds. I, y'all, the first time I wrote it, I was so excited. I woke up at 3 a.m. to do my makeup that day. I had bright neon, like green and blue eyeshadow on. I bought like this blue dress that matched the track perfectly. And I even bought like these wasp hive earrings, which I will show you one second. So I got these earrings specifically because I knew I was going to be riding Fury. And um, so you could obviously tell your bitch was excited as fuck. So uh, I would like to personally give Bollinger and Mabelard a big old smooch for this one because I usually don't tend to gravitate towards B&Ms just because they're a lot more fun and graceful rather than like the intensity that I like, as you can tell based on my other top rides. Um, but Fury is an exception to that rule. Uh, it's a giga, obviously it's 325 feet. It's in the name and goes like 95 miles an hour. So this thing whips through that layout. The tribal clef is beautiful. That first drop is absolutely beautiful. And just thank you, b &M. Thank you. All right, so number six, Sanguazia Bush Gardens, um, which is dumb because it's like essentially an intimate. Like just looking at the layout, it it's giving intimate. You know what I mean? Uh, intimate vibes all around. The intensity, the elements, the layout, intimate. Uh, it's like 206 feet tall and goes like 76 miles an hour. So it's got the stats, it's got the elements, everything about it is like amazing. And the reason it is a little lower is I had a very horrible like day, I guess. Not a bad day, it's just like I felt really sick right before riding it. And I was like super, super grumpy. It was like 107 degrees out. I was like nauseous, my head was hurting, I was sweaty, uh, and like they kept stopping the ride over and over again for like thunderstorms, but it wasn't even raining outside. So I was like on the verge of tears because I just wanted to get on Iron Gwazi because all I heard about for like until it was open was Iron Gwazi, Iron Gwazi, and I rode the original Gwazi on both sides. So I was like super excited to experience it, but... Maybe I'll like it a little more when I ride it when I'm not crazy. Which is dumb because I also did my makeup that day. Like I did it in the car. I did like some purple and green eyeshadow. So I was super excited, but man, it was just a little too hot. I don't know how you people in Florida deal with that all the time. Anyway, so number five is Maverick at Cedar Point and I just, my sweet, sweet, sweet Maverick. Uh, this thing is only like 105 feet tall and it only goes like 70 miles an hour, but like it just kind of proves you don't need massive stats to be like one of the best roller coasters on earth. That The first time I rode this, I was bewildered, flabbergasted, shooketh to my core. And like, I know y'all are going to come from me, me and be like, but Steve is like right there. And like, listen, I... Steve is fun, don't get me wrong, but I kind of knew what to expect when I rode Steve for the first time. My uh, home park is New England, so the amount of times I rode Wicked Cyclone, I just knew that I was going to be Wicked Cyclone on crack, and it was. That's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Uh, but I went in to ride Maverick completely blind, and I just... I got off and there were tears. There were tears. And the only reason that it's number five and not higher is... um. Just because like the restraints aren't the best also why in the world on the second launch does it go straight into like a break run maverick please also put back the heartline roll put it back you cowards all right so number four is sky rush at hershey park another intimate do we see a pattern here maybe i don't know but sky rush is best described as stupid it's dumb. I don't know how else to describe it. I don't know how it exists. I don't know whose idea it was, but whosever idea it was, I want to give them a big old smooch. It's 200 feet tall and it goes 90 miles an hour. And by that first drop, how is it legal? It is the most ridiculous first drop I have ever experienced to this day. Like the way it like, yeets you over that hill like all the way in the back row i just hello it is literally actively trying to yeet you out but like do it 
I dare you. So number three is I305 at King's Dominion. And I think we can kind of start to see a theme in the kind of coasters I enjoy. Uh, with a height of 305, obviously, and a speed of 90. Um, this thing makes me gray up every single time without fail. Without fail! That first drop into the first turnaround, I just, I start seeing stars. Uh, I just love the feeling of when a ride is like trying to murder me, like it is actively trying to eat me out. I just, I don't know how this thing is legal also. I, I imagine the conversation for this ride kind of went like, Hi, I'm King's Dominion and I really want a giga for my park. <laughs> you want a giga? I'll give you a giga. You. Like that's just what I imagined was going on when King's Dominion reached out to Intamin because it is intense for literally no reason whatsoever and honestly I have to thank them for it. It's intense for me specifically. I don't even know. Whatever. Like those whippy turns? The laterals on those whippy turns? I just, ah, I just, it's just ridiculous. Like again Intamin, thank you. All right, so number two is Velocicoaster at Universal. Um, I am pretty sure it's like everyone's number one and number two right now, and like for good reason. This thing is absolutely perfect. I mean, 10 out of 10, no notes from me whatsoever. The pacing, uh, the elements, uh, the theming, uh. I just like the first half is absolutely beautiful and like the second half is equally if not even better than the first half because usually a ride will kind of get kind of boring and whatnot on the second half but no Velocicoaster keeps on going like those elements too like that top hat the roll over the water like please I just this thing is 155 feet and goes like 70 miles an hour I'm pretty sure and this thing just does everything with those stats perfectly and those launches are like super forceful too and I love a good forceful launch I just Intamin really popped off on this one okay so my number one is actually my number zero um as in like this thing will not be moved from number one no matter how many roller coasters I ride um no matter what I think is better than this specific ride is this one's not moving it's uh, El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure, um, and it's what made me an enthusiast. I'm here in this very weird hobby because of El Toro. Anyway, this Intamin prefab is just simply chef's kiss. It has a height of 181 feet, and it goes 70 miles an hour, so it's got the stats. It is tall, it is fast. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is Intamin really put their intimacy into this one, okay? All right, so that is my top 10. Um, fight amongst yourselves in the comments, I guess. Don't talk shit about Leave the Dips or I will come to your house and step on you with my big, gothy boots. Um, hope you enjoyed.